Well, we've, we've really leveraged the YouTube search engine. It's a wonderful search engine, and, and oftentimes Google feeds into it, right? People all around the world are asking questions. And so when you make a video that answers that specific question, YouTube, there's, there's a match right there. And oftentimes, if the more specific you go, you post that video to YouTube and you'll rank at the top of YouTube on day one. Welcome to Show Me The Nuggets, where each week, Joe chats with world-class entrepreneurs to find out the key principles, strategies, and processes that lie behind their outstanding achievements. Now, your host, the no-bullshit serial entrepreneur, Joe Troyer. Hey everybody, it's Joe Troyer, and welcome to another episode of Show Me The Nuggets. You guys are in for a treat today. I got a guest on named Nate Woodbury, who I'm actually like absolutely floored with uh, right now. So for those of you guys that don't know Nate, uh, Nate is really, really big in YouTube and building authority and building huge channels. Uh, in fact, my team did some research and uh, his biggest channel generates about a million dollars a month in organic traffic alone. Um, and I actually stumbled across a video, which we'll make sure that we link up in the show notes. Um, about why um, why Nate hires in the Philippines. And we're going to jump into this, but I was just absolutely enamored uh, by this video and left me on just a content binge. Uh, so Nate uh, runs and owns uh, Be The Hero Studios. And uh, without further ado, uh, welcome Nate to the show. Yeah, I'm excited. I love, I love being guests on shows like this and just uh, you know, hearing that you, you, the value you got out of that episode, it's like, yeah, this is awesome stuff. I'm glad people are catching on because this is fun. Yeah, man. So um, real quick, before we dive into that episode uh, and that, that video that you did, um, could you give everybody a little bit of background, Nate, and how you ended up in this crazy world we call digital marketing? Yeah. So I now currently produce over a dozen different YouTube channels. Um, but it was it was a journey. I started with a web design service, and while my clients had pretty websites, they weren't getting traffic or they weren't converting any visitors that they sent there. And so I like, okay, well let's let's start creating promo videos for them to put on their website, and let's do SEO for their website so they can get some traffic, you know, from the search engines. Well. Uh, those those services worked actually we we were able to get their pages uh, on their website ranked on the top of Google with a pretty affordable budget and one of the it was a whole bunch of work though and one of the steps that we did is we we recorded how to videos we put them on YouTube and then embedded that YouTube video on their page well after doing this for a while i i noticed that the YouTube video itself was getting 50 times more views then the page was it was ranking number one on Google. <laughs> I'm just like, we go through all this work and this one piece is, is uh, and so that, that caused me to kind of pivot and turn. And so I, I just developed my YouTube strategy more and more. You know, the channel that you mentioned that's bringing in between one and $2 million a month, that was the first one where I really went full force with a, a full channel. And that gave me a big track record of success. And I've since done many other channels that have all, we, we all just follow the same system, the same strategy, and it and it gets lots of results. So that that's that's how I got to where I am now. That's awesome, man. So um, at Be The Hero Studios is ultimately where you produce all these channels, right? Like that's what you guys do at Be The Hero Studios? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, our, the people that we work with that we produce their channels for are typically influencers, somebody who has uh, expertise. So it might be a, a coach, a business coach, or it might be a, a motivational speaker or somebody who's written courses. Anybody that sells courses online can really leverage YouTube. So they fly out to Utah. We typically film 20 episodes in a single day, so they only have to come here every four weeks. But we, yeah, we're really aggressive, but we get great results. I love that. Um, with with going through some of your content, it seemed like Nate, you guys got really, really clear. You and your team on video was the direction that you're going to go in. But not only that, like you really productized it seems like you're offering and really pack a ton of value. Like you said, like one of the ways by coming to Utah one time and you do one filming session, right? And knock out 20 videos. I, I absolutely love that. Obviously you're, you're getting rid of, I'm sure the biggest bottleneck uh, in, in your type of business, which is getting that raw footage. So you guys can actually do your magic, right? Yeah. It, I mean, I, 
I focus on results. And, and what I mean by that is I don't, I don't get fulfillment if I just create a service. So if I were, if I just provided videography, you know, people could come to me and I just do what they tell me. Oh, we're going to film five videos today. Oh, we're just focusing on one or we're doing this, this strategy. So for me, I, I like, well, I want to get my clients results. I just want to, I don't just want to sell them a step. So I, I figured I had to kind of hold their hand all along the way. And it, it's really, really worked. I, I've found that approach. And, and I've actually, when I search for companies, when I'm looking for help, I'm like, do you just are you just selling me a piece? Or are you actually going to take me to the finish line? Um, because I, I love delivering those results, but I like to make sure that people deliver me results or I have to know, okay, what else am I going to have to be responsible for? Yeah, full service for sure. Start to finish. I love that. Um, and uh, I was just talking with a, a potential new client today. And they're like, hey, we're looking at your proposal and we saw you doing some things in here that really aren't like what we hired you for. Can you explain like why you propose that, that, that you're going to do this for us? And I'm like, yeah, if I don't, you're not going to get the end result. And that's why you came to me. So if I don't do these things, I can do everything else in the project plan. But if I don't do these, it's not going to work for you. So uh, that yep. ultimately walked me the jump because they saw the the end to end service, so to speak. Nice job. I love that. That's good. Awesome, man. So um, let's talk a little about a little bit about the why why I hire in the Philippines YouTube video um, and uh, and kind of some takeaways uh, from that video, and then we'll dive a little deeper. Yeah, totally. I. Uh... I learned about hiring people in the Philippines almost 11 years ago. And, you know, I, I love teaching any topic about entrepreneurship. And so I made that episode, why I hire people, you know, why the Philippines ended up, it's, it's been my number one performing video. And I've got a lot of fans in the Philippines as well that actually um, have commented and, and, and it's been fun, but it's, it's an important topic because um, I, I love leverage. So as much as I love focusing on the end result, I would say even more than that, I, I love a efficiency and being able to to leverage like it's I, I always want to be careful for people that are new to the topic of outsourcing because because what I'm talking about here is leveraging people but that that's what an employee is whether in the Philippines or the USA you're you're leveraging people so that I don't have to keep you know making the food or you know cranking the wrenches or whatnot I can hire employees to do that um, the workforce in the Philippines, they're amazing, they're talented, they're skilled, they're, they're patient, they're kind, and um, with their economy, they are really struggling. It's, I mean, don't even count the pandemic. They're, they're a developing nation. Um, the pandemic has made it even harder. Um, I've got 13 full-time employees right now, and, and all 13 of them obviously have kept their jobs. They haven't had to lose their jobs, where um, one guy who's been with me for six years um, they used to have three incomes in, in their house, his mom, his dad, and him. Well, both his mom and dad have lost their jobs because of things related to the pandemic. And now the burden of paying the bills is all on his shoulders. And it's not, not easy. He's not like happy about it, but he's got a steady job. And, and yet the, the amount that, I, that I, I pay compared to what I would have to pay somebody here in America is like one-tenth or one-eighth. Uh, and so what what that translates to is if I'm hiring one people, one person in the USA, I could take that same investment and I could hire eight or 10 people in the Philippines and just think how efficient, think how much leverage that is. And you're helping out. Uh, I, they don't like to be called a third world country. They like to be called a developing country. Developing. Um, you know, they're very talented and, and it's it's like there's there's economic benefit for me. It's a win win for me. But, but it's also like uh, it's it's emotional, like it's it's like the service, it's like the charity that I'm contributing to. It's it's so cool. Yeah. So uh, I love working uh, with Filipinos. Well, a big piece of our team is Filipinos. The guy that outreached to you, Eduardo, was a Filipino. Post production guy is 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 a Filipino. Uh, my executive assistant, uh, my PA, is a Filipino. Uh, the guy that runs the entire promo strategy for this company is a Filipino. So we, we work with a lot of Filipinos and, and, and I um, echo everything that you said. I think especially now, though, during the pandemic, the opportunity is insane with the Philippines because so many people in the in the BPO and the outsourcing industry that had um, in-person jobs have now been shut down because of the pandemic. And now more than ever, I think the talent pool has really opened up. 
uh, inside the Philippines. I'm curious if you've seen the same thing, Nate. You know, I I haven't been in a hiring mode for the last, I guess, during the pandemic. So it's not, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Yeah, it's been super interesting. We're seeing um, we're seeing crazy opportunities right now because of the pandemic. You know, more Filipinos than ever, I feel like, are looking for good opportunities. Um, and so uh, it's definitely the right time. If you're looking at, at, at this video now, uh, don't be shied off because of the pandemic. Um, so Nate, what I loved when I watched your video and what really moved me uh, is you went to the Philippines, right? And I've always talked to my team about going and I always thought it would be really cool, but there was a, a moment in your journey Right where I think you know it was pretty fresh. It seemed that you had just met your team. You took them to dinner. Didn't seem like you had been there that long, and you could see this emotion just come over you, right? And it was such a proud. I feel like, and maybe that's not the right word. So, so correct me if I'm wrong. But it seemed like such a proud moment where you realized, like, this is such an amazing thing that I have a team here in the Philippines. And could you uh, describe that experience a little? Yeah, because I'd been hiring and, and had my team for nine years. Um, one of the, you know, one of the people on my team's been with me the whole time, so now ten and a half years. So at that point, nine years, first time going to actually meet them in person. And um, you know, my project manager picked me up from the airport, so I got to meet him and whatnot. But we, then I met his sister, which was all, which also worked for me at the time. We went to this restaurant, and one by one, you know, the rest of the team at the at the time I had ten. 10 full-time team members and they came in and it's kind of like I was sitting in the middle. There were five on this side, five on this side. And um, they were all looking at me with admiration and like, and I just, I kind of felt a little bit of the weight of like, they all depend on me for their livelihood. And yet they're, you know, and they're here like just showing me so much admiration and respect. And, um, and I, I, it just kind of, it hit me and it hit me like, you know, with with our world of, of technology and internet communication and just si simple you know chat or, or direct messages it's easy to think of people as robots because there it's like here's a job here's your next assignment you know here's your pay but i got to meet them in person and uh yeah it, it just it, it, it hit me emotionally and it was really helpful for the team as well because they all worked from their homes they had never met each other and i was worried like is this going to be some awkward company meeting but everyone got along. It was fun. You know, they were quick in conversation. They were having fun, like talking about our different clients and laughing. And um, it, it was really neat. So I went back again in 2019. I was planning on going again this year, but that's that's not going to happen. But yeah, so it, it's not a requirement, you know, to hire people in the Philippines. I I obviously went nine years and I didn't. But there are some big benefits that came from, from meeting them in person. Yeah, man. Uh, it was so cool. I remember watching the video and I immediately reached out to Eduardo, who then reached out to you. And I'm like, dude, you got to get Nate on the podcast. Watch this episode. And then immediately, you know, to the rest of my Filipino team, showed them the video and they loved it. And they were like, are you going to come? And I'm like, yeah, but we got we got to like get past the whole pandemic situation first. But yes, um, I'll make the commitment. I'm coming. Um, and what was crazy, I saw the benefit in just making that statement. Yes, I'm coming. Um, the, the, not the attitude in a bad way, but so much more um, emotion came out in calls and it just took our relationship to a different level, right? Like sometimes when you're outsourcing, no matter how much of a team member somebody feels, uh, like you said, it's just like, yeah, here's the work, you know, see you later. Um, and, and you don't have so much of that in-person relationship, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just, my mind kind of went back and I was thinking about, you know, there, there's a team member, and I won't mention a name, but there were there was a little bit of um, miscommunication, I guess, and, and what I thought was, oh, this this person just doesn't doesn't really take their job seriously. They they're they're kind of fizzled out. Maybe they maybe they just need a another job. They need a fresh start. And I w I was considering, um, you know, letting them go. Um, but then my what my mind I went back to like now wait I've met this person in real life and I remember we hiked up the volcano which the volcano that we hiked on has erupted since <laughs> the Taal volcano but I'm like we hiked this volcano together and we had these conversations and and so just just meeting her in person and being able to have that memory and then I went back and I just communicated with her and said you know what 
this is what I've been thinking and I want to hear your thoughts. I want to know where you're at. And um, I don't know. It just, it's, it's like you kind of eat the, the personal part of it. The, the connecting piece is, uh, wasn't there had I, had I not gone and met them. That's so awesome, man. Uh, you definitely inspired me to, uh, to get on a plane and a long trip from the States here uh, to, to go see uh, my team. And they're super excited for that. So uh, I just want to say thanks. Uh, super inspired by by your videos, and thanks for uh, thanks for shooting those, uh, and not just keeping it bottled up inside, uh, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot more coming too. Good man, good man. I'll I'll be on the lookout. We'll make sure that we link up in in the show notes uh, to everybody your channel as well. Um, to somebody that's on the edge, hesitating um, uh, about outsourcing in general. What, what would you tell somebody if they were your closest friend and they're like, Nate, I, I just don't know, I, you know, uh, am I, am I paying too little maybe as a concern or, um, you know, are they going to be smart enough to do this or what, what would you tell somebody that's on the edge? They haven't made up their mind if this is really something that they'll do. Well, it's, it's so affordable to try. I mean, if, if you're going to pay 500 a month, that's 125 per week. And typically it's, it's in a week that you can tell if it's, if it's going to work out or not, if they're, um, if they're, if they have the skills that they said that they did, you know, so it, it's a $125 experiment, right? And so there's, there's really, really low risk there. The one other advice that I always share to people that either have never outsourced before or have tried it and said that it doesn't work or it didn't work for them is you you've got to systematize your business and then hire them to run that that system so as a bad example if i were to think like you know what i need to start doing facebook ads i've never done facebook ads before but i think that's going to really help my business i'm going to hire somebody in the philippines to do facebook ads for me and i'll find somebody that's maybe done that for another company if I hire them, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because I don't, I don't know how to do it myself. I don't know how to monitor them. I don't know if they're doing it right or wrong. I haven't created a system. But in a real example, a good example, I have my video editing process down. I know exactly how to, you know, what types of transitions we use. I know the length. I know, and I can talk that language, and I've done it. I can show many examples. So then I can go and I can hire a video editor saying this is what the footage and audio is going to look like when you get it and this is what the end product looks like and this is how you do it uh, go ahead and give it a try and then they'll do it they'll get it 80 percent of the way there and i'll say okay good job you got it eight percent of the way there you already saved me a ton of time um here's what you need to do right on this part and here's how you can tweak this next time i give them a new project maybe they're 90 percent of the way there and, and you know you train them um and and you you have them run a system that, that's the biggest mistake that people make is the first example, just hiring somebody to do something that you don't want to do or that you've never done before. Um, but a, the good example, if you systematize it, separate yourself from it so that they can then jump in in your place. It works really, really well. Yeah, I love that. You, uh, you hit on two key points. Most people, or maybe three, most people never go through the process themselves and develop the system, right? To then hand over to somebody else. And then they wonder why the process doesn't work. So I love that. Yeah, you, you gotta go through it yourself. You gotta test the process. And just because you think it's bulletproof doesn't mean it really is, right? Like give it to your kid, even use the whole process and give it to, um, you know, give it to a virtual assistant or any new hire and see how they do with it. And it doesn't mean that it's a good process, right? I'm sure that, the, you know, there can be plenty of holes still in it. And even after you've built processes for a long time, it doesn't mean that when you create a new one, it's going to be perfect. So I love that. Um, the thing that I took away is that you've got you to gotta iterate, right? And you've got to give feedback. You can't just give them, you know, a Word doc or whatever is it your project management system is and say, here you go. And it's not set and forget, right? It's still, <laughs> you're still dealing with humans, right? Like, and there is a learning curve uh, even when you have the processes done. You're going to have to iterate. You're going to have to give them feedback, um, and you're going to have to build that relationship and their skill level too. Yeah, absolutely. The, it, it's it's worth the effort because in the beginning, you think you hire somebody, it's like, oh, that's going to free up all my time, and in the long run, it will. But in the short term, you're going to be putting in the same amount of time to communicate with them and give them feedback and give them the training that they need, and so 
you know, it, but it, but it's so work. It's so worth that work because it eventually does free up your time. And if I, you know, I've got 13 people right now, as I mentioned, to think about how much we can get done, <laughs> as opposed to if it were just me. Um, you know, that if my world, because I've been outsourcing and uh, you know for for almost 11 years, and to think what my world and what impact I've made uh, in in the clients that I've helped and the business that I've created and the impact it's made in our country, if I hadn't have found this great way to, to utilize these amazing people in the Philippines, it's just like my whole world, my whole life would be completely different. Yeah, so true, man. Um, I'm curious what somebody would say, like, uh, if I outsource to a developing country uh, where there's an economic benefit, right, like there is in the Philippines, to, to working in the Philippines as an American, Am I um, am I taking advantage of somebody in the Philippines? Um, you know, with with the economic differences in terms of what a dollar is worth, uh, you know, in the states versus there. What what would you say to somebody? And I actually, you know, uh, saw on one of your videos you asked your team members this very question, and I thought that this was just so brilliant. Yeah, I mean, because are we taking advantage? Well, if you're looking at that phrase in a negative way, I, I would say no. And, and how do we know that? We I asked my team. Um, it, it's so we're certainly leveraging, right? We're there's we're certainly blessed because of that. But when I asked each of my team members, and and I did this, we were walking down from the volcano, and I just went to team member, team member said, you know, just just speak your mind. You can say whatever you want. Do you feel like you're being taken advantage of because of the dollar amount? And there was some, there was a common theme among what they said. They they used the word blessing and opportunity. So every just about every one of them used both those words, saying, "No, this is this is a great blessing." And then uh, something I didn't expect is every one of them talked about the commute and that they didn't have to commute, and that was such a blessing because, especially in the Manila area, the traffic is just a nightmare to the length of time to get from point a to point b is just crazy and um to think that they don't have to spend that time before or after work they don't have to pay for transportation whether they have their own car or bus or motorcycle or the the jeepneys uh, which i've never been in one yet but oh i've been in those little tricycle things those are fun but they don't have to pay for the transport or the time and they they get to work from home when my project manager, when I asked him this question, uh, and I I even asked a more personal question, like, well, do you feel you could get a higher paying job if you were to, to work here from a company maybe in Manila? And he said, yeah, I probably could get a job that paid me more, but the amount that I saved from from not having to commute and the time and the convenience of being at home, this is, this is definitely much better. And all my friends, I actually admire that I get to work from home and work for an American boss. Yeah, so cool. That's awesome. All right, so I want to transition here a little bit. Um, I, I, you've you've been a wealth of knowledge, and I want to make sure that we take full advantage of your wealth of knowledge. And so I want to transition a little bit and talk to you about YouTube because I feel like I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about YouTube in a little bit and talk about really what's working for you on the YouTube front. So we have, um, we have Nate, a lot of SEOs that follow the channel. We have a lot of marketers that follow the channel. Um, they get the big idea behind YouTube. They get the big okay. ideas and, and the levers in terms of, you know, what's needed to, to rank. Uh, but, but what do you think when it comes to kind of the 80-20, specifically for YouTube, what, what is it that you think everybody's got to nail in order to really scale like like you've been able to help your clients and, and yourself scale uh, when it comes to YouTube? Well, we've, we've really leveraged the YouTube search engine. It's a wonderful search engine, and, and oftentimes Google feeds into it, right? People all around the world are asking questions. And so when you make a video that answers that specific question, YouTube, there's, there's a match right there. And oftentimes, if the more specific you go, you post that video to YouTube and you'll rank at the top of YouTube on day one. And so it's the, the comparison of doing, doing tons of SEO for a website versus doing SEO for a video, uh, it, there's really a non-comparison because uh, you know it's how we get a website to rank is by the content. And so just focusing on the content, that's kind of the shift that I made 
because I don't offer web design or I don't offer SEO for websites anymore. We really just have that, that content focus and it really makes the job easier to where I can focus on one person. What question are they asking? And I'll make a video that, that answers that. It's, it's really as simple as that. Most people don't do that step though. They, they film the video first and then they try and add in the keywords that will make the video ring. Um, if you do it in reverse, where you do the keyword research, let me give you an example. Um, Doreen Spackman's a good friend of mine, and she's a, a nutritionist, and she has a lot of natural remedies. And she says, I've got a great natural remedy for a sore throat. So we could have hit record and titled the video, you know, Doreen's Natural Remedy for a Sore Throat. And we could have posted that. What we did instead is we did keyword research and we found the phrase how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. So it's real specific. That's nine words long. And now she knew because we did that first, she knew, okay, I need to talk specifically about why not antibiotics. And I need to talk specifically about strep throat. And, you know, we recorded that video and that video is done really, really well. It first got traction in the search engine because we ranked at the, at the top for that specific phrase. And then once the algorithm saw, okay, this is a, a good performing video, it keeps people's attention, then it started promoting it to more and more audiences. So that's that's the biggest factor. I mean, there's other things that we do. We, we want to keep our videos an average of 10 minutes in length. So we, we shoot for that. We want to keep people's attention. So uh, we try and, and look at the stats and see, okay, are we, are we at least at 50% average view duration? Um, we... we we do custom thumbnails, which is key, and we'll do A-B split testing of thumbnails. Thumbnails are they, they're critical. They become more and more important over the years, and, uh, and so they're more and more important today than they ever have been. You have to design a thumbnail that creates curiosity. And, and one, one key tip that usually is a surprise to people, whatever your title is, those words do not need to be on your thumbnail. Um, your thumbnail and your title are always shown together. So use a different use different words or, or something additional that will create curiosity. So I'll just use that title. If the, if the title is how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, you might simply say this always works, right? I mean, or this secret, you know, worked. And and so it just creates more curiosity. Um, and then the, the last ingredient that I that I use is and it's 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 a big one, but uh, in order for this formula to work which let me tell you the result and then I'll tell you the final ingredient. Okay, the result is after after several months of gradual steady growth, all of a sudden something clicks and you start to get exponential growth on your channel. That usually happens right around that four month mark. And that's when you include these four the, these five ingredients. So you gotta do keyword research before you film, average length 10 minutes, 50% average view duration, you gotta do custom thumbnails, and the last ingredient got to post five episodes per week. So, I mean, you heard me mention, I, I filmed 20 episodes in a day. That's why we that's why we film so much in a single day and we have to do it efficiently because that, that lasts us four weeks. All my clients have, are business owners. They're, you know, they're, they're family men and women. They, they contribute to their community. They have busy lives. And so to film every single day is just, just crazy. Uh, but, but you, to get, to get that exponential boost from YouTube, which makes all the all the difference, you got to post five episodes per week. Man, that's golden. Good stuff there. So two things then. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you actually split test the thumbnails? Like, what's that actual mechanism? Like, are uh, if you don't see lots of click throughs right away, are you like replacing the thumbnail? Um, I've heard some people talk about that. Uh, but if you can walk us through that a little bit, and then second, Nate, if you could talk about um, how you guys do your research, so to speak, before a shoot, right? When a client comes into Nate's office, right, and they're like, all right, Nate, I'm here, I'm ready to shoot, what do you do to make it easy for them, and, and what have you done in terms of research, or how do you do that, uh, I think are two follow-up questions um, that I'd really love your insight on. All right, so for the thumbnails, we do use a software called TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy.com. Um, you have to have hundreds of views on a video in order for that to be statistically significant. Um, so even before that, if you're just getting started out, design a, a thumbnail with your best guess 
think, okay, I, I think I have an idea of what will create curiosity. And you'll look in your analytics and YouTube tells you this has a 3.67% click-through rate or this one has an 8.9% click-through rate. And so you'll get a feel of what's good for your channel and what's an underperformer. The underperformers go ahead and just, all right, this one didn't do so well. What if I did this? So that that's a manual approach that you can start to do from the beginning. And then once you have enough volume, um, TubeBuddy, I think it's 30-something per month that they do it for you. Uh, you upload two different thumbnails and, and TubeBuddy, which has access to your YouTube channel, will alternate them and track the stats and it will let you know which one is the better performer and it will tell you if it's, you know, how statistically significant it is. It's like, yeah, this one is definitely better. So that's the tool that I use um, and, it, and it's great. Uh, YouTube has been promising for years actually that they're gonna add that within the, the YouTube Creative Studio, but the, I mean, they even said so a year ago in the spring. They said, yeah, it's coming this summer. <laughs> well, we've had two summers and it, we haven't seen that. Okay, so then your other question was, how do I help my clients prepare and how do I do that research before filming day? Um, it used to be more work than it is now. I have a secret tool that I can share with you. I used to use the AdWords keyword tool. I, I used, used to use so much where I would, try and come up with a whole bunch of ideas and it'd have to narrow the ideas down based on search volume and man, it was a pain. It, it took me a year to train one of my assistants to, to kind of think the way that I thought about keyword research. Well, let me just simplify it for you. Um, two years ago, I was introduced to a new tool that SEM Rush created. So SEMrush.com is probably familiar to your audience. The company has been around a long time. Maybe they use a lot of the tools. Well, two years ago, they came out with a tool called the keyword magic tool it was in beta it's now official it still says new next to it but the keyword magic tool you can type in any topic hit search and then there's a button the button says questions so after you hit search you hit questions and it filters out everything but the questions and then there's a, another tool that I like to use you hit advanced filters and you can filter for word count so if you're only looking at questions and let's say you set the parameter to eight words or more that's that's the gold right there that's the gold on youtube we don't need phrases that have huge search volume more important than search volume is that there's at least a trickle but that it's it's a long phrase that's really specific and clear and so i i do that personally with my clients you know i've got i've got a videography team i've got my team in the philippines my role is really helping them get clear on their strategy. And so once we have our list of 20 titles, uh, I just have them prepare talking points and say, all right, if this is your title, how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, then first you're going to talk about, you know, why not antibiotics perhaps. And then you're going to go through the, the three different ingredients and talk about dosage and then talk about maybe wrap it up with a story at the end. And so, you know, you just create an outline of what you're going to talk about. So when you show up for filming day, uh, it's just it just kind of goes like clockwork. You've already got your content prepared. Awesome, man. That's great. I actually had no idea that that tool existed. Uh, I use SEM Rush all the time, and somehow didn't even know about it. So that's great. Uh, great little uh, tip there. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, do you do that research with your client um, in terms of what each uh, video is going to be about before they fly in, Nate, um, yeah. or when they get there? Because just doing that myself. I know that sometimes, man, like that takes a really long time, just just bulleting out, kind of outlining the video. And I know from experience that that can throw off a video shoot really fast, right? If that's not done in advance. Oh, oh yeah, you're totally right. So we've, we've had a, a client that I thought was more prepared than she was. And, and she's, she's great. Her content is great. But when we got into it, we ended up, you know, we have the camera recording for 20 minutes. We hit stop. We're ready to go to, to number two. And then we realized uh, we just took 30 minutes to prepare for video number two. And then we hit record. And then it's like we were spending more time between videos than actually recording. Uh, and we were there till midnight and we were all exhausted. And, you know, she's trying to have high energy on video, but she's just, you know, feeling inside like oh, this is the longest day of my life. Um, and so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's so important and it makes your content so much better. Obviously, you do the keyword research first to choose the titles of the videos. Um, and, and 
it's actually like some of my clients over prepare. They they script out exactly what they want to say, and you know th that there can be a strategy for that. There can be use for teleprompters and whatnot. Um, but what I what I like I've there's some videos that I still have used a teleprompter on, but it, it's rare nowadays because when when you can just talk from your memory and, and your your natural pauses and your natural stutters or bad grammar or yeah. or mess ups, right? You just come across more authentic and people relate to it more and they they follow you more because it's real. It's not a rehearsed presentation. They know that it's not scripted. You're just talking to them, and that's what really works on YouTube. And so, I mean, in fact, the videos that I script usually aren't YouTube videos. They're more of a promo video because I want to want to be really specific. Yep. But yeah, on YouTube, it's really just about all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this first. You know, I'm gonna talk about. Let me let me think of a video. Uh, I'll just use the same example. Um, so I'm gonna talk about why not antibiotics. That's all I write. I just write a bullet point. Why not antibiotics? And then the next one to talk. You know, talk about raw honey. That's one of the ingredients, you know. So that's what my outline looks like. It's just kind of a memory jogger. Um, another another tip I like to give my clients is plan on intentionally pausing between each point. Instead of thinking, okay, I've got to remember these seven different points and remember their order and got it in my mind so I don't have to look down at my notes. Um, we have this thing called editing. <laughs> and, you know, jump cuts, they are accepted and, and embraced on YouTube. Yeah. So if you have a jump cut, that's fine. Or you can do a crop edit where the camera angle or the camera zoom kind of changes. And so you could have 10 seconds that we just cut out where you're looking down at your notes. But when you do a crop edit like that, people never even knew you, you skipped a beat. And so uh, it actually makes your content better and it helps my, my clients relax. Just look at the first point. I'm gonna talk about why not antibiotics. That's all I'm worried about right now. When I'm done with that, then I look down at my notes. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about honey next. Okay, and then I look at the camera again, and I, I just talk about honey. So, yeah, it, it, that, that's how I prepare my clients. Yeah, man, you, you said something there that I want to uncover real quick that's so true that I didn't really think about at first. You said that when the client's like really trying to script it out, think through it, they're like exhausted. They're beat up. And at the same time, trying to give you full energy, right, and, and seem really extrovert because being on camera knocks you back like four pegs, right? <laughs> Um, and, and all the while they're just beat. So I've been there too. I think, uh, you gave us some really good tips, right? Uh, a couple of bullet points, use jump cuts. I think in today's day and age too, if you're not using like jump cuts or that type of editing, like it's not a normal YouTube video. Even if you are saying everything like we are without notes and without looking down, uh, you, you're still would want to use jump cuts. Like that's, what's acceptable. Um, so I think you're right, like take advantage of um, uh, of the viewing style, so to speak, or the production style uh, that, that is being used on YouTube. And uh, and you don't have to show up so prepared and you can be a lot more natural on camera. Yeah. And, and to add to that, don't don't even stress about your recording equipment. Right. I mean, the camera that we have in our pocket on our phone is amazing. It's totally amazing. And, you know, we want to pay attention to lighting. So, I mean, what I'm doing right now for this recording, I've got a big window right here. So I don't have any studio lighting on me right now, but I made sure that I didn't have the window behind me. <laughs> so if, you, if you're, you know, put your, put your phone on a tripod so that it's steady and, and have the window or the light source right behind your camera. And, and if you don't have an external microphone, just be close enough to your camera so that the audio is good. I mean, really, um, Start out where you're at and, and just start having a conversation and sharing advice in, in that way. That'll be way more valuable than, than stressing about investing in, in this camera that's going to magically make your videos go viral or, uh, you know, or the lighting or, or any other. There's a lot of fun gear, you know, and, and, and there gets to a point where it's like, you know what? I have a specific need. I want to get footage from an aerial position. I need to buy a drone. I need to buy myself. Give me a business reason to buy a play toy. Or, you know, I have a reason why I want to upgrade to a DSLR camera instead of my phone because I really want to be able to blur the background. I'm giving a real example for me there. That's what I wanted to do. That, you know, just a kind of a quick a testament to this. I, I started, I, when the iPhone 4S came out, it was the first iPhone that had an HD camera. And, and I learned how to film 
with the the bright white background. I kind of learned how to do that with that that, and so I made some of my own videos. And my my web design clients at the time saw that and said, "Those are nice videos. Can you film my videos?" And I'm like, "I'm just using my iPhone." I started for a year. I offered video production as a service, filming with my iPhone. I had the the, the paper backdrop. I had the lights. I had the teleprompter even at the time. I was just using my phone to do the filming. Then eventually I had a need. So anyway, the moral of the story is start with, with what you've got. The phone, the camera that you have now is so much better than the iPhone 4S. Yeah, that's awesome. Too funny, man. Too funny. So Nate, this has been awesome. I just want to say thank you. Uh, amazing podcast episode. I know the audience is going to really dig it. Um, I want to wrap up by asking you one question. So um, as you look at your business today, um, you look at your team, you look at how it operates and how it runs. Um, what's the one book that you think has made the biggest impact on the way that you do business and the way that your business operates, your team, et cetera? And then, and then just why? Give us kind of the takeaway and, and what that book did for you or, or what uh, the aha moment is for you. Yeah, there's a few that come to my mind. Um, the, the one that I would narrow it down to would be the E-Myth Revisited. Uh, I'm guessing you've heard of that one, Michael Gerber. Um, yeah. Really, because I, I love efficiency so much, and I love systems, and for me to hire people in the Philippines, it, that was a real, a real key. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple others. I, uh, another one that was a game changer for me was uh, Tim Ferriss, What's uh, the four-hour work week. The interesting thing is I learned a lot of principles from him in that book that I started to apply except for the outsourcing part. It just seems so foreign to me, to pun intentionally. It, it really seemed like, oh, that'll, uh, that's, I don't, that's too hard. Um, but I gained a lot from that one. Um, and another one, um, kind of a combination of two books by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrant, really understanding the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner. And that, that ties into the E-Myth Revisited, where you're working on your business, not just you know, yeah. you, you are your own employee. Um, those are, those are kind of my, my staples throughout my whole, uh, entrepreneurship adventure that, that, uh, yeah, they're, they're must reads or listens. I listen to audiobooks. Yeah, man, those, those are definitely four staples for any entrepreneur, any business owner, uh, for sure. Four staples that everybody should read. Everybody should have, uh, on their bookshelf as well and should, should reread. Um, and so, yeah, I'm probably due for a reread on probably all four of those books. Uh, so even because I've read them before, man, uh, still classics um, and books I'll, I'll definitely put on the list to reread. So, Nate, man, thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'll be sure to link up in the show notes to Be The Hero Studios and also the classic and infamous why I hire in the Philippines video that, that we've been talking about. Is there anything else, Nate, that you'd like to link up in the show notes specifically or anything that, that you want us to, to, to link up for you? You know what? I will, I'll give you a link. I have a, a keyword research mini course that I give away for free. Okay. And, and I actually show step by step how, how I go through the process of finding awesome. uh, these exact phrases. And so I'll, I'll give that link to you so you can offer that for free. Awesome, man. Uh, I know our audience will love it. Uh, thanks so much for the value today and uh, have a great day, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. That's been another episode of Show Me the Nuggets. Nate Woodbury, absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Please leave a review. Leave Nate some love. Have an awesome day, everybody. Joe Choi. Sorry.